So what happened in this avalanche is there was a party of three skiers. The first person skied down without incident. It was when the second person was skiing that he came in and triggered the slope. It broke maybe 50 feet above him and then carried him down into these trees, which he was lucky um, he wasn't buried and wasn't injured. The third skier came down, saw the second skier. They did not see the first skier who just skied out and didn't even realize the avalanche happened. Because the first skier was already headed out, they assumed the worst that he was buried. They did a beacon search. They could not pick up a signal and assumed the worst case scenario that there was a problem with his beacon. So they very quickly started using their probes and their skis to probe likely areas and started looking for him. When they realized that, they th when they thought that maybe he was buried and his beacon wasn't working, they immediately called 911, which was a smart move to get help coming here as soon as possible and other resources. That was all happening. They were working on their search. Luckily, they were able to spot the first skier's tracks going out of the debris and they were able to call off the search and the rescue. And it, in this case, it had a happy ending and it's a good lesson for all of us um, to watch out for the surface or layer. One thing that's notable here is that it's not big, scary terrain. This slope is 36 degrees at its steepest. And over there, it's more like 34 degrees going into the low 30s, which is avalanche terrain. Uh, but from a skier's point of view, it's not that steep and uh, certainly doesn't look like a big obvious um, avalanche path. But when, the, when we're dealing with surface horror, it can break on lower angled slopes and uh, we need to be hyper aware of our slope angles.